Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of Crit Hit Reviews, with your host, Arlian. On today's episode, I'll be talking about a title by Infinite Falls, namely Night in the Woods, a heavily narrative-oriented adventure game. But is Night in the Woods a title that will have you talking about how very decent it is, or will it have you lamenting that life sucks forever after you play it? Night in the Woods tells the story of Maple Roski, a uh, anthropomorphic cat who's returning home to their sleepy hometown after a not so successful stint of college. So, sort of like my life, but minus even leaving my hometown. Mind you, this return sees them working to rebuild relationships with friends and family, getting into hijinks, crimes? Crimes. And bouts of band practice also leads to them uncovering a different side to the place they grew up in. And that's about the best I can describe it without getting too deep into spoiler town. Maybe I could add like, there's a dash of Scooby-Doo there if it went three shades darker? In any case, I'm generally fond of the writing, whether it's the effort put into building the world at large, the way it fleshes out the various characters scattered throughout the town, and even the manners in which those various bits of dialogue interlink with each other across the scenes. Like, honestly, a vast portion of the dialogue and story scenes in the game are entirely optional, and you could go without meeting or getting to know so many characters. For instance, it breaks my heart that it's entirely possible to never meet the Miracle Rats or Rabies. I'm not going to explain that, but it's awesome. Also, the fact that the side elements in the game flesh out the main story further was a nice touch, and generally made exploring the friendships with May's two close friends, being Greg, a fulfilling enough experience for me to warrant a second playthrough just to see all the story scenes involving the one I hadn't hung out with the first time around. Greg rules, okay? I'll also say that Night in the Woods carried a fairly special place in my heart for the manner in which it provided an array of interesting characters who have their own struggles and flaws, and which can be emphasized with due to the realness of what they're going through. It's not often I see a game which tackles things like mental illness in the way that this game does, or how isolating being queer can be in the struggles that people go through. By and large, Night in the Woods does play out fairly simply, as the meat of the game boils down to experiencing the story and talking to the various characters around the town. It's very much driven by its narrative, of which, as I mentioned, the story section is mostly optional. There really isn't much stopping you from just skipping past a vast portion of the dialogue through the game and just doing the main story, though doing so will end up with you missing out on a fair bit more than just nuggets of character interaction. And that's because there are certainly a number of novel and fun sections which mix things up throughout the game. Whilst the thing that most commonly shows up is simply platforming to advance, albeit never in an obnoxious way, there's also a lot to explore in the hub of the town, with a whole lot of optional things to examine, characters to hang out with and doodle in your handy dandy journal about, which mostly just gets filled with context-specific scribbles as you progress the game. That said, for the most part, Night in the Woods is a very accessible experience to wander through, and even the bits of alternative gameplay which show up, like having a silly knife fight or spraying people with water in a mall, they're easily enough understood. Also, I am the absolute worst at aiming pierogies at someone's mouth. Honestly, the biggest exception to all of this is the game inside Night in the Woods, namely Demon's Tower. This little retro wonder is story-like compared to everything else, but it provides a genuinely challenging bit of adventuring to do, as you wander through this game inside a game, navigating a monster-infested tower. There's bosses to slay on each of the floors, varied enemies that begin to crop up, and the big twist is that you never actually get stronger in Demon's Tower. Your gear stays the same, as does your abilities, though you do get an excellent dodge that allows you to iframe through projectiles from the get-go. Instead, you actually grow gradually weaker, until by the end of the game you're perpetually sitting in one-shot territory. It was a neat and altogether challenging bit of gaming, and it made for a genuinely nice change of pace after I'd spent a lot of time bantering with the town's various characters. Also, for those who end up going through the main game and need something more, 
there's a pair of side games that can be found in the extras section. Uh, these both play a bit differently from the main game, one being more narrative oriented, and one actually being more puzzle adventure-y. But they both actually clarify things inside the main storyline are entirely worth doing, those being Lost Constellation and Longest Night. If you haven't tried them and you've played the game, I would recommend going with them. That's about that. Anywho, in the audio department, this game absolutely rocks socks when it comes to sound design. And not just because its various tracks of music are a lot of fun to listen to and even be involved with, I'm looking at you, band practice and weird dream sequences. No, it even ranges to things as simple as the noises you make when you hop and the satisfying way it sounds to land on top of a mailbox or to bounce on top of a telephone wire. Also, in case you haven't noticed, Night in the Woods has a really distinct art style that is lovely to look at and has a lot of character. The thing that got me the most was just all the detail in the character animations, as seeing their expressions change was a lot of fun. Also, May's ear wiggles are great, as is the way they just sort of flop as they move. Like, I'm in love with this trash fire protagonist, except not because that'd be weird, but they can have all the head pads. Also, given just how different Demon's Tower is, I'll give it an honorable mention here as being pretty endearing in its appearance, as it managed to pay homage to old school Zelda games but has some very lovely bit of animating going behind it. Overall, I adored Night in the Woods for so many reasons, and I do admit a part of it is that I could emphasize with the protagonist, flawed as they are. May is not a perfect person, and the game readily admits it, but it shows the dichotomy of their imperfections, their self-loathing and awkwardness, along with their genuine attempts at helping people despite it, at trying to rekindle and get close to people, at dealing and learning to adult. It might not necessarily be the most heroic of journeys, mostly, but it's realer than most, and that really hit home. But even beyond that, the game was just so good. The dialogue had me laughing out loud so many times and just thinking of and missing my friends. The various scenarios and the way the games mixed things up was a lot of fun, and it managed to pace things out, so I was always enwrapped with it. And I love, love, loved exploring the world and finding all the people to talk to and learning the stories in the town, even if so many end in an all too familiar sense of sadness. There was a lot of magic there, and even when the game got grimmer, I found myself wanting to see and know more until I finally reached the end. Which, again, made me feel incredibly grateful that in the extra section of the game, there was that pair of small mini games which added onto the narrative. And you know, just chilling and playing Demon Tower was great. So, I mean, what I'm saying is Night in the Woods is a crit hit. Narratively, it just knocks it out of the park for me. And if you haven't given it a poke, I genuinely recommend it with all my heart. Anyways, that's a wrap, so I'd like to thank you folks for both tuning in and sticking till the end. Whether you agree or disagree with my thoughts, I'd love to hear from you folks in the comments, and... For those interested in more indie reviews or interviews with developers, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified when we have a new release. There's also our coffee if you'd like to support us making new videos, and lastly, if you'd like to join our community, there is a handy dandy button to our discord both in the description and in the banner, so you can tag along for the ride. It's cozy there, I swear. Anywho, I'll catch you folks on the next episode of Crit Hit.